Hello friends, I will be posting few short videos which will help you in last minute preparation of radiology. Today we will be discussing about chest radiology. So before everything you must remember a normal x-ray appearance which will help you in interpreting an abnormal x-ray. So uh, most common view done is PA view. For rib fractures we do AP view. For pleural effusion we do lateral decubitus. Left or right lateral decubitus view. Remember the left hilum is higher than the right hilum and right dome of diaphragm is higher than the left dome of diaphragm on a normal x-ray on a normal x-ray hilum is formed by b a v that is the right and the left bronchus the pulmonary arteries and the upper pulmonary veins or the superior pulmonary veins it is not formed by the inferior pulmonary veins or normal lymphatics or normal lymph nodes now very very basic but uh, repeatedly asked question is about the heart border cardiac borders that is the right heart border is formed by superior vena cava right atrium and inferior vena cava the base of the heart is major majorly formed by the right ventricle some part is formed by the right atrium and left ventricle the left heart border is formed by left ventricle left atrial appendage the pulmonary artery and aortic knuckle the left atrium it lies posteriorly so it does not form any cardiac border on the pa view look at uh, serial ct sections these first three are soft tissue or mediastinal window images and the last one is the lung window image on mediastinal window you have to look for cardiovascular pathologies the lymph nodal pathologies or mediastinal pathologies or the chest wall pathologies this is the arch of aorta superior vena cava and the trachea this is superior vena cava ascending aorta descending aorta and main pulmonary artery and right and left pulmonary branches the left atrium and the right ventricle and left ventricle now in this image this is the lung window so we will be looking for lung parenchymal diseases like interstitial lung diseases alveolar diseases or the bronco uh, bronchial pathologies now coming on to pathologies uh, on a PA view, at least 100 to 200 ml of fluid is required to be visible. But on lateral decubitus view, it can detect up to 10 ml of fluid. But the investigation of choice for pleural effusion is ultrasound chest, which can detect up to 1 ml of pleural effusion. Now, this X-ray is a typical of a pleural effusion, which shows the blunting of the right CP angle with rising fluid levels. Now, in this X-ray, there is the opaque right hemithorax or the whiteout lung and it is accompanied by shift of trachea towards left side the shift of mediastinum and cardiac apex towards the left side so this is indicative of large or massive pleural effusion now on ct image uh, there is large pleural effusion the visceral and the parietal pleura are not visualized but if on a ct image there is pleural effusion accompanied by thickened enhancing visceral and parietal pleura this means this is a split pleura sign and it is indicative of empyema now opposite of white out lung is a large blackout lung there is large air in the left right hemithorax so there is absence of bronchovascular markings and the visceral pleural layer is visible so this is indicative of pneumothorax the hallmarks are the absence of bronchovascular markings now this is also accompanied by the shift of trachea mediastinum and cardiac shadow towards the contralateral side so this is indicative of tension pneumothorax there is also depression of the right hem uh, hemi diaphragm okay and on this image there is uh, pneumothorax accompanied by pleural effusion so with air fluid level so this is hydro pneumothorax now this is the ct image of a patient who has met with a roadside accident so this is a lung window and this is the normal left lung parenchyma this is the normal right lobe and these are contusions this is pneumothorax this is air in the chest wall which is indicative of surgical emphysema now in this x-ray there is a large uh, opacity in the left upper zone with visualized bronchial markings so this is consolidation with 
air bronchograms this is clearly depicted in a ct image which shows consolidation of the lung with air bronchograms now air bronchograms with consolidation they can be seen also in bronchoalveolar carcinoma and the consolidation or pneumonias caused by staph aureus they are accompanied by pneumatoceles now in the klebsiella there are bulging fissure due to exudates another white out lung but instead of contralateral shift of mediastinum there is ipsilateral shift of trachea mediastinum and cardiac shadow so this is because of the collapse of the right lung because the collapse is due to the obstruction of the airway the absence of air bronchograms there is absence of air bronchogram in a consolidation means there is a collapse a very important question that is primary tb or post primary tb primary tb is seen in children the, it is accompanied by necrotic bulky lymphadenopathy pleural effusion gone focus or a tuberculoma rankes complex that is gone focus with calcified mediastinal lymph nodes cavitation is rare in primary tb in post primary tb cavitation is very very common it is more uh, commonly seen in apical segments lymphadenopathy pleural effusion is also seen now the endobronchial spread of the pathology gives the tree in bud appearance there can be another pattern which is known as millery pattern now the healing in a uh, post primary tb is by the fibrosis or bronchiectasis or distortion of lung parenchyma the compli complication is uh, which can be seen in the uh, post primary tb is the hemopsis which is due to rasmussen aneurysm which is a branch of pulmonary artery not the branch of bronchial artery now in this x ray there is some nodular opacity with mediastinal lymph nodes so this is the rankes complex this is the gons focus this is a ct image showing multiple necrotic peripherally enhancing lymph nodal masses uh, this is the ct image showing endobronchial spread of tb that that is tree in bud appearance multiple small nodular lesions giving tree in bud appearance see it's similar to the picture shown here which gives tree in bud appearance this is pathognomic of endobronchial spread of tb now the post primary tb with a large cavitating thick walled lesion in the apical segment of right upper lobe another cavitating lesion in the upper lobe of left side left lung now this is the multiple tiny nodular lesions scattered throughout the lung parenchyma these are millery shadows or millery nodules this is typical of a millery tuberculosis now if a pre existing cavity that is uh, colonized by some uh, fungal ball this gives the air crescent sign with a fungal ball in a thick walled cavitating lesion this is typical of a aspergilloma see a thick walled cavitating lesion with a fungal ball in the dependent part and a air crescent around it this is pathognomic of aspergilloma now in bronchiectasis bronchiectasis is dilatation of bronchi with thickening of the walls it can be cystic cylindrical fusiform these are the ct images showing cystic bronchiectasis the dilated spaces with thick walls these are cystic bronchiectasis now the two signs of bronchiectasis or appearances are a signet ring appearance which is because of a dilated bronchus accompanied by a bronchial artery or vessel which gives the signet ring appearance now tram tract appearance is because of a dilated bronchus with thick walls giving a tram tract now in this x ray there is massive cardiomegaly the heart size appears to be enlarged and it gives a appearance of a water bottle or money bag appearance so this is typical of a pericardial effusion now in this ct image there is a thick fluid layer surrounding the heart so this is pericardial effusion the but the investigation of choice is echocardiography for pericardial effusion now the most common benign pulmonary tumor is the pulmonary hematoma this is a small nodular lesion in the right lower zone showing speckled or popcorn calcification this is a ct image showing a nodular lesion well defined rounded nodular lesion showing multiple dense calcific foci uh, giving popcorn calcification appearance suggestive of a hematoma now instead of 
fine millary nodules which were seen in the millary tuber uh, tuberculosis these are multiple large variable size nodular lesions scattered throughout the lung parenchyma on both sides this is typical of a cannon ball, ball metastasis which is seen in renal cell carcinoma and corio carcinoma and other important question is calcified metastasis they, these are seen in osteosarcoma which is also accompanied by a pneumothorax now very important question repeated in the last exams multiple times so this is a pulmonary embolism the signs of pulmonary embolism are first is fleschner sign which is enlarged pulmonary artery because of intraluminal thrombus this is a enlarged pulmonary artery because of intraluminal thrombus now if this enlarged pulmonary artery is a right descending pulmonary artery it is called pala sign now if there is a large uh, intraluminal thrombus which has obstructed completely uh, obstructed the lumen of the pulmonary artery it gives a complete cut off so this is called knuckle sign see the large pulmonary artery enlarged pulmonary artery which is cut off over here because of an intraluminal thrombus this is a knuckle sign now if there is obstruction to the pulmonary vessels the distal lung will show oligemia that, that is westermark sign there is a obstruction of the pulmonary artery and the distal lung shows oligemia or decreased bronchovascular markings which is because known as westermark sign now over the time when there is oligemia there is low uh, there is decreased blood supply this will result in an infarct which is usually a wedge shaped infarct known as hampton's hump so the fleschner sign is a enlarged pulmonary artery because of intraluminal thrombus the knuckle sign is because of complete cut off due to the intraluminal thrombus now due to complete cut off there is pulmonary oligemia which is westermark sign and after oligemia there is infarct which is wedge shaped and is known as hampton's hump there can also be pleural effusion now on ct images let's see the investigation of choice is the contrast enhanced ct angiography but the gold standard is a pulmonary angiography which is an invasive procedure so investigation of choice is contrast enhanced ct angiography which will show a large thrombus in the main pulmonary artery and extending into right and the left pulmonary artery so this is a saddle thrombus now on a ct scan axial ct image of a vessel showing a intraluminal thrombus with a crescent of contrast around it so this gives a polo mint sign or polo mint appearance so saddle thrombus which is a thrombus extending into both right and left pulmonary arteries and a polo mint sign that is intraluminal thrombus with a crescent of contrast around it in this x-ray there is a thick walled cavitating lesion showing air fluid levels this is air this is fluid air fluid levels in a thick walled cavitating lesion this is typical of a pulmonary abscess now again in this x-ray there is a thick walled cavitating lesion with air fluid levels but the fluid level is not straight like in an abscess it shows a irregular wavy outline so this is a water lily sign and is seen in hydrated cyst this is water lily sign on a ct scan this is water lily sign on ct scan it is due to the floating membranes of a hydrated cyst to mediastinum the most common mediastinal pathology is the lymph nodes and then second most common is neurogenic tumors then these are thymic tumors the mediastinum is divided into anterior mediastinum middle mediastinum and posterior mediastinum anterior mediastinal masses the mnemonic is 5t's first is most common is thymoma thyroid and parathyroid pathologies teratoma terrible lymphoma and thoracic or ascending aortic aneurysm now coming on to middle mediastinum the mnemonic is abcl aneurysm of the major vessels bronchogenic or enteric cysts cardiac tumors and lymph nodes now in the posterior mediastinum the most common tumor is the neurogenic tumor or neurofibroma or dumbbell tumor now coming on to mediastinal lymph nodes if they show a peripheral calcification we term it as eggshell calcification for this you have to remember a mnemonic which is a silly cool sergeant likes his tubercular blast 
ए फॉर अमाइलाडोसिस सिली फॉर सिलिकोसिस कूल फॉर कोल वर्कर्स निमोनिया सार्कोडोसिस फॉर सार्जेंट लाइक्स मीन्स लिम्फोमा हिज इज हिस्टोप्लाजमोसिस ट्यूबरकुलोसिस एंड ब्लास्टोमाइकोसिस तो असिली कूल सार्जेंट लाइक्स इज ट्यूबरकुलर ब्लास्ट इज द एक्शल कैल्सिफिकेशन ऑफ लिम्फ नोड्स ऑफ मीडिया स्टैंडम अमाइलाडोसिस सिलिकोसिस कोल वर्कर्स निमोकोसिस सार्कोडोसिस लिम्फोमा हिस्टोप्लाजमोसिस टीबी एंड ब्लास्टोमाइकोसिस सो दीज आर मल्टीपल राउंडेड लिम्फ नोडल मासिस in the mediastinum and both hyalae showing peripheral calcification this is a ct image showing thick peripheral calcification and is seen in the diseases described above now in if there are bulky lymph nodal masses in both the hilum the right and the left and the paratracheal region right paratracheal region so this is a typical of sarcoidosis or 1 2 3 sign or garland sign in sarcoidosis one is right hilum left hilum and third is the right paratracheal region 